Good morning. I'm glad that you can take a moment to join in this time of worship. Uh, the reading for this day comes from the book of Haggai. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains in a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but you have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, only put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build a house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth is crops. I called for a drought on the field, and on the mountains, and on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the, the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I gotta tell you folks that I need to empty my water heater. It is an act of maintenance that is important. I need to empty it and refill it. It is good for the health of the water heater so it doesn't explode someday. It doesn't fail catastrophically. It is not a task that is overwhelmingly hard, but it is going to take time. And I just haven't done it. And I haven't done it for years. Like I haven't done it with this water heater and I need to sit down and figure out how it's gonna work with this water heater. And it's gonna take a while and it's gonna be awkward. And, and I haven't done it and I'm not gonna do it today as, as this weekend is full after worship on Sunday. I'm gonna go over, I have an event to leave the Sunday afternoon and Monday is the first day of school. And, and so I've got things to do with my family and you know, it's just busy and I just don't have time for it right now. And um, it's, it's important. All right, but I haven't done it. What's your water heater? All right? Well, what's the thing that you need to do? It's important. You need. To, you know that you need to do it. Like it doesn't have to happen like right now, but you really need to get to it, and you've been delaying it for a while. You've been delaying it for so long that it's turned into something, some, something rather almost embarrassing to admit. I'm kind of. I, I admit. I'm embarrassed. That, that I haven't done anything to, to empty, because I know I should take care of my water heater, do that once a year, right? Remember that feeling, hold on to that feeling right there that you're having around that thing that you're suddenly intensely guilty about, but don't want to admit, hold on to that feeling. And let's, let's turn to this, this book, right? We have been following the story of the people, uh, the Jewish people, as they have come back from out of exile. They've come out from 70 years, years in exile, and they have landed back in Jerusalem and the southern kingdom and in Judah. 
And they rebuilt the altar in 538, they started worship, and then the next year in 537, in a moment that was both glorious and hard, emotionally wrought, right? They began to rebuild the temple, they had gathered the large stones and put, got, got all the contractors and workers and craftsmen and artisans together, and they, they are getting started rebuilding the temple, and, and then a challenge had come up, right? Their neighbors had undercut them and backstabbed them, and, and they'd offered to help in a way that wasn't helpful. For more details, you can see last week's sermon, right? That how that all how that unfolded, and, and the politics of it that unfolded, and the letters to the emperor, and finally, after a while, they had received permission in the mid 530s. They're ready to go. Here we can get started. And then they didn't. And the temple that had the foundation stones laid became their water heater. That thing they really needed to get to, but they just didn't. They stalled out, right? They, they had cut the stone to get going, but you know, it's not like stone goes bad. They just let, we'll, we'll get to it next season. All right, got, got to work this land. Got to, haven't really worked the land for years now, and he's got to get this, keep on getting this farm back into shape. And, and, and you know, we're just kind of busy, and the you know, family's growing, and you know, my daughter, and you know, just got to figure out the well. You got to dig a little bit further. In the well. But they just didn't get to it. And, and so, it, a few years down the road, 15 years later, in the year 520, God calls the prophet Haggai. And Haggai shows up, and he starts spreading the word of God. And um, I, there is no way for me to read Haggai and tell you about it without, I mean, the, without just telling you what it is. The word of God that Haggai brings is a butt chewing. That's, that's just really what it is. I, I can't think of any other term that adequately expresses the, the, the sense of what this is. This is a butt chewing. It's a very concise, short, two, two chapter. That's all it is. This, this book of the Bible, it fits on one page, depending upon how big your font is, right? It's short, it's concise, and, and, and it gets to it, right? I, I'm going to give you sort of my paraphrase of what Haggai says, my modern translation, and, and, and so I'm going to give it to you, and this is the entirety of the book, and, and, and here we go. Right. It begins, uh, to my people from the Lord your God, you say that it isn't the right time to build my house, but it sure does seem to the right time for you to live in your nicely finished houses. Yet think about how your lives are unfolding right now. You spend money, but you don't have much to show for it. You eat plenty, but you're never satisfied. You drink, but you're thirsty. You put on your warmest clothes, but you still shiver. You work for wages, but your bank account never seems to be anything but empty. You see what the problem is here? Rebuild my home. Right? Do it. Do it for me. Because you are seeing what it's like when you put yourselves first. How's that going for you? Now, you have been stingy with me, and so your entire life has been an experience, has now turned into an experience of stinginess. Your fields and your flocks, everything. And then the leaders of the people hearing this word from God, they listened. They obeyed. And they began to work on the temple, and the word of God came again to Haggai, who told the people, gathered, that they, that they needed to know that God told them that I am with you. And the next month, as the temple was continuing to be worked on, the word of God came to Haggai once more. And so Haggai went to the leader of the people, the high priest, and told them the message from God. Do you remember what the temple once looked like? Doesn't look like that now, does it? So keep at it. Your work is not done. I, the Lord your God, I have been with you since I brought you out of G Egypt, and I am still with you. My plans for you are still good, and that includes what you are doing right now. For this temple, it will be filled. It will become a place where people sing, seek health and wholeness and holiness. And then two months later, the word of the Lord came to Haggai for the last time, and it was a message for the priests. 
and they were reminded, think about how unclean this works. Right? Think about how when you get muddy, the dirt just rubs off on everything. And think about how you have been dragging your feet with regards to worship and rebuilding the temple. Time to shape up, clean up, get going again. You too, even you the priests. And remember that I chose you. I chose you, and have you, as I have chosen you, and you follow me, your crops will once more yield a bountiful harvest. And as you follow the line of the house of David, they will lead you well. That's it. That's the book of Haggai. It is rather blunt. Put worship at the center of your lives, and your lives will make sense and be satisfying once more. Seek your own good first, and you, <laughs> it is not going to go well for you. Right? Again, there is no way to sugarcoat this. This is a butt chewing. You knew what you were supposed to do, and you didn't do it, and you avoided it for 15 years, and now it is time for you to go and do it. And then that's what they do. They go and they start and the prophet gives them the good news that you are on the right path again. Right? And that, that's, that's how the book unfolds. I want to point out two things about this. First, I think it's important to remember who it is that delivers this butt chewing. It is someone who, who loves the people enough to really lay into them when they need it. Because they have a sense of it's, it's time to get going. It's time. I'm going to love you into this. I mean, this is the very uh, epitome of that idea of tough love, right? This is, if you think about who it is, like all of us have been chewed on at some point by someone who just wants to get at us. And you know what? Those, those moments are easy to kind of end. But it, it's, there are moments when someone who truly loves us and wants what's good for us tells us it is time to shape up, right? I remember a, a lady in an amazing teacher in seminary, she once delivered a one-sentence butt to it that to this day I remember. I was sitting in her office and she looked at me and she said, Andy, you can do better. And I remember feeling like I had been nailed to the wall. And it was, whoo, right? She was right. And I did better. Because Dr. Ellen Davis told me it was time to do better. Right? The, the people who can say this are the people who love us, the people who are committed to us, our friends, our, our siblings, our parents, whoever it is uh, it might be. And in this case, it's our Heavenly Father, right? Even though these two chapters are blunt, they, they happen in the larger context of a God who loves the people so much that he has brought them out of Egypt and he has sent them the prophets and he is going to send them his only begotten son. Like this is not just some random person who is showing up to tell them to shape up. This is the Lord their God who is chosen them and loves them. So this is a butt chew and giving them from a stance of love, which is a good thing. I don't know if it makes it more comfortable, but it's important to note. And second, this is a book of hope. It is a hope which is based upon knowing that when we do what God wants, we move closer to God's desired outcome. Right? There are times when what God wants is hard. Building a temple is hard. But it's worth it, because getting closer to what God wants is a good thing. Right? It is experience a satisfying in the long run good thing. And so I guess the question that we need to ask of ourselves at this moment is, what is the water heater? Right? What is the thing that is hard that is worth it? Right? What is that? And it's going to vary by person. Is it uh, an act of forgiveness? I've got to forgive this family member, this, this person. It's hard. I mean, you understand what this person has done to me, but I still need to forgive them. Yes, yes. Maybe it's some, an act of forgiveness. Maybe it's an act of committing to serve, right? I, it's hard for me to get out and serve. I'm not comfortable doing it, but it, oh, okay. Love, the, love your neighbor, right? It's time to serve and to find this way to get out and go do this, even in this time. Right? Maybe it's a, an act of getting, our, of getting finances in order and saying, you know what, I'm going to put my finances in order and I'm going to put God first in this. I'm going to write that check on a regular basis. And it is hard, right? But it's worth it. 
Uh, whatever it is, I don't know what your water heater is, is. I don't know what it is that needs to be done. I don't know what it has been, what it is that has been ignored for a long time, whether it's months or years. But as I read the, the prophet Haggai, all I, can, all I know is it, it, it's time to do it. That's it. Right? Do it. I'm going to empty and clean my water heater, and I will do it before next Sunday. It's time to do it, right? That, that's, it's been long enough. They needed to rebuild the temple. They did it. It had been long enough. And that's true for all of us. What is it we need to do? Just, just do it. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we listen to your prophet Haggai, one of the most blunt people in all of Scripture, who delivers your blunt message that it's time to do it. Just make it happen. Buckle down. Do the thing. It's worth it. Do it. And so we pray for our the ability to do just that. That we might lean on you and do that thing that you are calling us to do to get closer to putting worship at the center of our ever, ever more at the center of our lives to, to follow you faithfully whatever the next faithful step is to do what is your will for us in this time. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day and always. Go forth now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.